Today I want to address the Putin Russia war in Ukraine and I want to address it on behalf of mnglobal.org and I'd like to address it as an advisor, a Yoetz, the pre Sanhedrin based about the Chacham. And we're going to talk about what the Torah has to say and how to understand what is going on because we cannot solve the war if we don't understand what's happening. So I'm going to give two examples from Torah that explain the situation. Number one, when Yosef's brothers sell him and he ends up going to Egypt, it's because they assumed that just like Avraham Avinu threw away Ishmael and Yitzchak pushed away Esau, so to Yaakov, which really wanted Rachel, is going to stick with Yosef and he's going to throw the other brothers away. So the other brothers, out of necessity for survival, took a precaution to decide to or kill Yosef or to sell him and so on. So they didn't judge Yosef for something he actually did to them. They found it necessary to get rid of him as a survival instinct to to uh, to prevent the future from happening. Um, of course, they were wrong because Yosef loved them, and he even didn't tell his father what they did, so that their father shouldn't actually throw them out of the inheritance. So, for the seventeen years that Yaakov Avinu was in Eretz, was in Eretz Mitzrayim, in Egypt, they made sure. Uh, sorry, Yosef made sure not to tell his father what they did. Because if he would tell them, if he would tell his father what they did, he would really throw them out of the family. So Yosef stopped the trauma in the family. So that's number one. And the same thing here with Putin. Putin is not punishing Ukraine for something they actually did. He's punishing them for something he thinks they might do. Because when they join NATO, it's very possible they joined it for business, maybe for protection, but not in order to threaten Russia. That was Putin's calculation. So Putin is trying to punish Ukraine for something they never did. He's punishing Ukraine for something that they never did. He's scared of them, so he's taking the first initiative. And how do we know that this is wrong? How do we know that you're not allowed to punish someone before they do something wrong? Yishmael, the angels wanted to kill him in drought in the desert. They said his kids are going to be crazy. They, they're not worth it. God said to them, you cannot punish him for something he never did. If his children are going to misbehave, they will be punished. Right now, you cannot punish someone for something that he never did. Now this is Shneur Zalman, Senor Salaman, my son. And just like I want him to live a happy life, so too Judaism says, I give you today. I give you today the de life and the death. Choose life. There are many ways to solve an issue. Putin has to understand. You don't have to be worried about Ukraine. It's a peaceful era. It's an era of enlightenment. No one's attacking you. Even if they're joining NATO, it doesn't mean they're going to attack you. That's number one. Number two. You cannot punish someone for something they never did. If Ukraine crosses the border into proper Russia then you can punish them. I'm not talking about declaring Ukraine as part of Russia. I'm talking about this. So that's the opinion, I think, of the Torah. We have to have unconditional love and we have to choose life 
we have to uh, sustain life. There's so much plenty in this world. It's really a shame. Most of the people in Russia don't agree, but I'm not going to talk about the obvious. The point is, Putin has to ask himself, am I punishing Ukraine for something they did, or am I punishing Ukraine for something they might do in potential? Of course, there are some bad players, of course, but everything has to be reevaluated because right now, the decisions that Putin is going to make can determine, at least that's what it looks like, of course, everything is in the hands of Hashem, but it seems that what Putin decides uh, might determine the fate of many people. Uh, so, he has to really take a good deep look and say, is Ukraine really responsible for my fears? No one's doubting that there's conflict. No one's doubting that there's issues. But the grandiose of the decision, is it really justified? All the best. The one who makes peace in the heavens, he shall make peace upon us. The Amen.